one of the reasons that people embrace Darwinian orthodoxy with such an unholy zealousness is just that it gives them access to power. It's as simple as that. Power over education, power over political decisions, power over funding, and power over the media. No one in a society which is openly contemptuous of religious expression in any form wants to be identified with the side at which the intellectuals and the uh, leaders of taste and opinion are going to snicker. This again is human, human nature. We would not expect a philosopher to be boisterous in his denunciation of Darwinian theory if it could cause people at the faculty club to whisper about him. And that's exactly what we find. Tremendous amount of pressure uh, in this society or any other to conform to socially accepted beliefs, strategies of uh, evidence, appraisal, and the like. Well, well, the idea that, that the scientific enterprise is, is governed by a majority of opinion, it's not entirely a foolish idea. I mean, we can't, we can't get rid of it uh, completely and say that the truth is so unassailable that it can be discovered by one individual uh, inevitably running against uh, the tide of every other individual. There has to be some consensus in some points of view of science. Um, and, and to suggest that the fact that so many biologists are willing publicly to endorse Darwinian theory is of no account is foolish. Uh, to a certain extent, I do agree with that. It, it is important to present uh, within an educational uh, establishment what is the standard, the mainstream, the canonical view. There's, there's no question about that. But at the same time, for heaven's sake, let's open up the discussion a little bit and present some countervailing views, at least to the extent of, of um, appraising Darwinian theory um, in the context that realistically portrays it for what it is, a kind of amusing 19th century collection of anecdotes that is utterly unlike anything we see in the serious sciences. That would be my favorite position. Um, yeah, biologists do agree um, that this is the correct theory for the origin and, and um, diversification of life, but here are some points you should consider as well. One, the theory doesn't have any substance. Two, it's preposterous. Three, it's not supported by the evidence. And four, the fact that the biologists are uniformly in agreement about this issue could as well be explained by some solid Marxist interpretation of their economic interests. That would satisfy me. It's not asking for much, is it? <laughs>